Today we're going to talk about writing relations and also cover domain and range. So first we're going to talk about the unit vocabulary. So the first thing is a coordinate plane. So a coordinate plane is formed by the intersection of two number lines. That is the horizontal axis, which is known as the x-axis, and the vertical axis, which is known as the y-axis. So here the vertical axis is also called the y-axis. That's why at the end of the number line it's labeled Y. And the horizontal axis going from left to right is known as the X axis. Over here, the graph where they intersect, right here at the middle, is called the origin. The origin, which is also the ordered pair 0, 0, is the point where the axes intersect. Each point is named by an ordered pair. So for instance, this right here is considered a point, the ordered pair would be 3 comma 2, meaning it's 3 units to the right and 2 units up. So the point itself is on the grid, the ordered pair is the numbers signifying where it is on the graph. And then this we already covered, the plane containing the x and y axis is called the coordinate plane. The only thing I want to differentiate is a coordinate plane has to have an x and y axis. If you took away the x and y axis, this would be a grid. A grid is just a boxed thing. Once you add the x and y axis, then it's a coordinate plane. Okay, so now let's look at today's lesson. Before we start, let's talk about what a relation is. Okay, so a relation or a set of ordered pairs is called a relation. A relation can be represented in several different ways. It's an equation, as a graph, as a table, or as a mapping. So let's look at an example. Example one. First thing we have is a set. Now a set is denoted by these squiggly brackets. That would be an open set and close the set. It could also be written as a list. So sometimes they'll just give you a list of ordered pairs, but this is particularly a set because of the squiggly brackets on the end. So we have four ordered pairs, and we're going to write it as a table, in a graph, and as a mapping. So this is the new unit. So first thing for a table, we're going to create two columns, and I like to call it an x and y t table, because it makes a column for the x values, a column for the y values, and then separates them with a t. When you go and write your ordered pairs, you're going to write your input, or your x here is 0, its corresponding output, or y, is 0. So then my second point, negative 3, 2, negative 3 represents the x. Remember, x is always the first coordinate, y is the second. These are all x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. So the second one, negative 3, corresponds to 2 on the y. For the third ordered pair, 6 corresponds to 4. And for the fourth ordered pair, negative 1 is going to correspond to 1. When we graph this, if you remember back to last year, when graphing, you always start at the origin. Now, last year, your grids used to be numbered. For algebra this year, your grids will not be numbered. The first ordered pair, which is 0, 0, is going to go directly right in the middle. That is 0, 0. Don't write the ordered pair on the grid. We're just going to put the points. And I'll label this one A. So that's going to be point A. Okay. Point B is going to be negative 3, 2. Now, if you forget, when you graph, okay, we talked about your first coordinate being x, your second coordinate being y. If your coordinate in the first part is a positive, you're going to move right. If it's a negative, you're going to move left. So if your first number, for instance, is 3, that means you're going to move right 3. If it's negative 3, you're going to move left 3 units. For y, if it's positive, you're going to move up. If it's negative, you're going to move down. So this should help us when graphing. So for ordered pair b, I'm going to start at the origin. The first coordinate says negative 3. So a negative 3 is going to tell me to move 3 units to the left. So 1, 2, 3. And then my y coordinate is 2, which means I'm going to up 2. I'm going to put my point, and I'll label it point B. Okay, next we'll look at point C. Point C has an ordered pair of 6, 4. Again, we always start at the origin. The 6 is going to tell me to move right 6 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then the 4 is going to tell me to move up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, so positive and positive, right and up. For the last ordered pair, we have negative 1, 1. 
the negative one is going to tell us to move left one, and the positive one will tell us to move up one, and we'll just call that point D. Don't connect them. They never said anything about connecting them. But that's just how to create a graph. You can create a graph using a table or a set or a mapping. I like to look at the table itself, but the ordered pairs help as well. Now, for a mapping, a mapping is going to be slightly different. A mapping is going to contain two bubbles side by side. One's the left side is going to be the X, or as we're going to call it, the domain. The right side is going to be the range, or Y. Let's be the range. Domain and range really are the X and Y. For the domain bubble, you have to put the numbers in numerical order, meaning from least to greatest. So if I look at, now out of all three of these, I like to look at the table. Out of the table, these four numbers are going to go into your domain, but the smallest is negative three. The next smallest is negative one. Then we have zero and then six. Notice they're in order from least to greatest, going from the top to the bottom. For the range, I'm gonna look at all my values of y. My smallest value of y is 0, my next smallest is 1, then 2, and then 4. Now, the mapping is almost complete, but the most important part is that you are going to tell me which input matches which output, or which x goes with which y. So, for instance, 0 needs to map to 0. So, notice the arrow is only on one side. You're going to draw a line, put an arrow showing that 0 maps to 0. I at least put a little check mark then. So that one's done. For negative 3, 2, we're going to have negative 3 maps to 2. Literally creates like a road map. 6 is going to map to 4. And negative 1 maps to 1. Okay, these are the four ways you're going to have to write it. So we have a set, a table, a graph, and a mapping. They're all interchangeable. All four of these represent the information in the same exact, same exact information in a different way. Now, the domain and range, we already said the domain are going to be all your values of x, the range are going to be all your values of y. The domain you're going to have to write in the set notation form, meaning you're going to have to create this squiggle in the front. Now, you're going to, have to write only the x values, and you're going to put them in numerical order. So out of all four, I like to look at this the most, because your domain is actually written right here. So we're going to have negative 3 negative 1, we're only writing the x values. Notice there's no ordered pair. Close the set. Your domain is negative 3, negative 1, 0, and 6. Our range, again, set notation, our range is going to be all the values of y in numerical order. Make sure you don't repeat it. For some reason there were two ones, so we're going to have 0, 1, 2, and 4. That's our range. We're all the values of x, all the values of y. Okay, let's do another example. Turn this over. For example two, we're given a list of five numbers and it's in set notation. The reason you know it's in set notation has the squiggle brackets at the end. So we have five numbers. For our table, we'll create an x, y, t table. And then we'll just follow each ordered pair. So four, negative three would be your first ordered pair. One, three, seven, negative two, 2, negative 2, and 1, 5. Now let's graph them. First ordered pair is 4, negative 3. We start at the origin for all of them. 4, negative 3 is going to be right 4 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, down 3. 1, 2, 3. That's my first point. My second ordered pair is 1, 3. So I'm going to write 1, up 3. And there's my next point. 7, negative 2 is going to be right 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, down 2. Our next point is 2, negative 2, so right 2, down 2. And our last point is 1, 5, right 1, up 5. If, it, if you really need help, you could always put the arrows next to it, so this would be right 4, down 3, right 1, up 3, right 7, down 2, right two, down two, right one, up five. So now we have a table, a set, and a graph, and we'll jump over to the mapping. For the mapping, you're gonna start with two bubbles side by side. Okay, you're gonna label your X 
in numerical order. But for this problem, there's one thing you got to watch out for. If you notice, here we have two ones. We're only going to write one once. Okay, and what's going to happen is you're just going to have two branches coming off. So my numbers here are 1, 2, 4, and 7. That's numerically right there. On the y, we start with negative 3. Then we have two negative 2s, but we're only going to write it once in the mapping, and then 3, and then 5. And then we have to do our actual mapping. So using the table, 4 maps to negative 3. Okay, 1 maps to 3. 7 maps to negative 2. 2 maps to negative 2. And then 1 maps to 5. So if you notice, we only wrote 1 once in the domain, and then the way it shows, you just have two branches coming off. Okay, the last step here, domain. Just remember, domain are only values of x, range are only values of y. So we're going to make the set notation. The domain is going to be no repeating numbers in numerical order. So we have all your values of x. x can be 1, 2, 4, and 7 in this relation. Your range here is going to be negative 3, negative 2, 3, and 5. And that's our range.